And hello. Happy Wednesday. A lot of people out there. So, oh, millions, thousands. It's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, hello, welcome back to our Wednesday evening sessions, as opposed to those decadent Sunday nights. Yes. <laughs> um, hello, Har, as usual there. Luke and Rocky seem a bit slow off the mark today. Wow. Hello, Emma. It was his birthday on Monday, so yes. maybe if we seem a, <laughs> a little sluggish. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone had a good... Well, we should, should we mention timings? The day of Hispanicity? Yes. <laughs> Spain Day on, on Monday? Hope and my birthday. One of those is important. Yeah. National holidays. Yeah. What is it? It's just a day which is like, Spain's great. Is that all it is? Does it mean well, it? Well, when you came home that day, you saw people with carrying flags and... Little flags on their cars, like diplomats. Yeah. But what does it mean, that day, to you? Well, it's, I think it's our 4th of July, something like that. Oh. I hate this day, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, what are we drinking? Let me, let me open this thing. Well, Fabio, Mal, Don't. everybody. Hello, welcome. <laughs> this is well, our drink for today. This is a really good wine. And it's not blah, blah, blah. It is really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the usual lies. <laughs> Usually we hate these wines, but today we actually like it. Today it happens that it's good. That is a great coincidence. The only reason Fabio is watching is because he wants to win that. Thing. Well, uh, we are drinking uh, a very special grape. And it's a very special day for us as well. For a good reason. It is the first time in here in the shop we uh, taste a uh, wine made with this grape. Yeah, we've done well, the Span Spanish version of it. So we do tastings every Thursday, private tastings, yeah. uh, normal daily tastings, and we've never had the grape called Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. We have, I mean, we have Pinot Noirs in the shop we've since then. <laughs> yeah, we we we. we, we sell them and, and we have also other really good Pinot Noirs but uh, this, is this is the first time we make a tasting of one of these that light color yes which it's more about that later <laughs> yeah my sister Eva is gonna love it and I know for Senor Fabio this is one of his favorite wines because well more on that in a moment first of all cheers uh, cheers mm. It's very aromatic. It's just great. Mm. Oh, excellent. This was one, mm. one, one of the wines of my Santo this summer. Yeah, so for those of you who are not Spanish, there's this bizarre thing in Spain, I guess Catholics. You're Roque, and there will be a day of San Roque. I presume there's a San Lucas day for me. Yep. When is that? What is it? I don't know. It's the... Oh, when is St. Lucas? Should check. Eva should know it. Eva, when, when is my day? <laughs> and now, that, and then you basically have a mini party because of your name. If you, but then, I well, imagine... If I, 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 not, not everybody makes a party, and not everybody takes it as, you know... Seriously so, as the Madrid So seriously family. as I do. But, I mean, I demand it. <laughs> yeah, nobody else wants to do I it. I demand it because I deserve it. What? No, I, t I do it because it's in, in the middle of August, so it's mm. a, also it's a good day for... And if the previous day is, is national holidays, always it's the 15th of... <clears throat> yeah. It's the Day de la Virgen or... So basically just loads of ex excuses for a yeah. party. Yeah. So anyway, we had this. Now, um, before we carry on... 18th of October. So it's in a few days, look. It's in four days! Wait! What are you going to do? Sleep! <laughs> sleep, we're going to have a nice sleep. Sunday! <laughs> I'm, have, I'm having sushi on Sunday. Yes, and you have a tasting as well. Oh. <laughs> With our friends. Oh, <laughs> great. Um, so, now there's a lot to talk about today because there's a lot going on yes. here. The great, the bodega, the region. Before we carry on, as usual, a bit of housekeeping. Now, every week when we do our tastings, we always ask people to take a photo of them. You don't have to be in it. Your face doesn't have to be in it, but a, a photo of your tasting whether it's a selfie holding the bottle, whether it is just a photo of the wine and some food that you're watching. If we're in it, great. But if you take a photo, upload it to your Instagram. Don't worry if you hate Instagram, but still, if you upload it, connect it with us at Madrid Daracot, 
<clears throat> at the end of the month, what we'll do is we'll compile a list of everybody who has done something, whether it's a post or a story. Either one is fine. And then at the end of the month, we will do a sorteo. We'll do yes. a um, lottery, and you will win a fancy bottle. Emily, uh, sorry, Emily. Laura won her Pago de Caravejas. Yes. And this month, we've got this bad boy. This... Uh, this is belongs as well from the same winery, uh, Hispano Suizas, and this is also a Pinot Noir. In this case, it's a rosé. It's a Magnum bottle, one liter and a half. Absurd. Of pleasure. <laughs> of pl uh, well, that's <laughs> that should be on somebody's like Tinder profile. A liter and a half of pleasure. San Lucas Pon Patron de los Medicos. So I'm the uh, patron of the, of the doctors. Um, so yes, now this is obviously a very elegant bottle. All the wines from Hispano Suizas have a very elegant uh, kind of presentation. Now, one thing before we carry on, I will say what I like about this winery personally is two things. First of all, they only make, <clears throat> I guess we could call high quality wines. They don't have a base range of three, four, five year ones, which is yep. not neither good nor bad, but is an interesting well, fact. Well, one of the <clears throat> policies of the, of the of the winery. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we'll talk about the winery more yeah. in a bit, but that's kind of interesting for us. The, none of them are crazy expensive either. They're all like 20 to 30. Yeah. But this, they're all kind of very good. And also, I have a personal connection with this particular wine. Uh, and I hate, I hate to compliment Fabio, who's watching now. But uh, we went to some wine events, I think about two years ago. I just opened the shop. <clears throat> I didn't know that much still about some of these fancier wines. And he went... Oh, me, me, look at that, that's the Hispano Suiza stand. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? <laughs> and he was like, just shut up and come with me. And we tried all their range and every single one. Well, again, we'll talk about the mm. other wines. Every single wine was like, pff, pff. and I remember I still have my Vivino ratings from that day and it's all four and a half, five, four and a half, five. I just love them all. Yeah. So I kind of, ha I've had a love affair with this winery, but it's only, it was only a couple of months ago that we finally were like, why, why don't we have these wines in the shop? <laughs> and then, or your your new best friend who you know bought some boxes. And he was like, "This is the best day. Yeah. I love you. We love, we love you too." And I went from there. But anyway, enough about that. Let's taste the damn thing. Well, uh, let's go for the technical sheet. That Rocky loves his homework. Yes. And this is our wine, Bassus. Basus, actually, do you know the name? Basus. It sounds like it should be, like, it sounds, I guess, Latin, yeah. but for something to do with... Bajo. 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 Is it? Like, yeah. Bajo. Yeah. But why is it called that, do we know? And the name of this? Impromptu. And then you get any... Any... Connection? Music? Your names? Music. That's right. I'm so smart. And what is Tantun Ergo? Tantun Ergo, the sparkling... Ah, what was it? Like, make of, make of it what you... No, I probably... So it's right. a song as well. It's a Latin ah, song. That's right. So, our musical terms are... They are taking <clears throat> musical terms for, for the wines. Bobos. So, Bobos is the only one that it ah. takes the names from the grape. Okay. Bobal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But in this case, Basus, it's a bajo. I love, a, I love learning a, with you. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, we are drinking 2017, which is actually the best of the last... Vin uh, vintages so you can find. 2018 has been super good as well, yeah. but 2016 <clears throat> is especially good. So every year it's like it gets really well reviewed, but everyone with this one was like, yeah. So uh, grapes exclusively one grape, 100% Pinot Noir. Just one grape. And here we should talk a little bit about Pinot Noir before we 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 go ahead. The thing is that Pinot Noir, <laughs> get excited. We, we haven't done it before, not because we haven't explored the Spanish wines, actually, that we have been doing for the last five years, mm. and we have done thousands of tastings. The thing is that Pinot Noir is very uncommon in Spanish wine. Yeah. Um, it's more popular probably in the area of Catalonia. Uh, yeah. And this part of uh, a bit cooler up there, kind of thing. Yeah, you have some examples in La Mancha, but it is a very French grape. Uh, where don't, it comes don't, from? Don't turn off. Um, where it comes from? <laughs> so I okay. <laughs> I should do like a pre-warning. I'm sure people have heard me over the years go mm, Pinot Noir this, Pinot Noir that. Disclaimer: Pinot Noir, traditional Pinot Noir. I mean, is not my kind of wine normally. 
I tend to like bigger, heavier reds. But that is because Pinot Noir, you could probably guess the uh, the black pine cone, if you want to translate it like that. Yeah. Um, what is a pine cone? Why don't you show us? Oh, oh. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> very well played. That's why it gets its name. It's, it's, there are very small grapes. It's a little tight bunch. Yes, conical exactly. shape. Um, but it's a beautiful grape. It's one of the most attractive looking grapes. There's two things to talk about. First of all, briefly, is the history. So, of course, Pinot Noir, as far as the modern world is concerned, is French. Um, it is from Burgundy, probably. Um, so if anyone's heard of the Côte d'Or and the Côte de Beaune, these kind of places. Um, and if you've heard of Chablis as well. Same kind of area, kind of mid-northern, middle of France, sort of halfway up northerny. Um, actually, the most plantings are in Champagne for the for the Carver, but really, the home of Pinot Noir is Burgundy, and those are the wines that annoy me <laughs> because the cheap ones are rubbish. This is you know a Burgundy for like eighteen euros is this is better I think. It's <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> um, very expensive Burgundies, and we're talking some of these wines go into thousands and many many thousands, which is just stupid wine. Fancy. Burgundy, fancy Pinot Noir, like around the 80, 90, 100 euros, delicious. But I don't have that kind of money. So cheap Pinot Noir almost doesn't really exist, especially not in France. It's a tricky grape to plant. It's very, very delicate. Um, but it's an old variety. Now, what is cool... What happens in Spain? It becomes very rough because of the weather? You, well, no. Well, the, the, <laughs> the grapes tend to almost shrivel and they burn. Um, so it's very hard to make it here. So... It has to be very high places, um, and a lot of the picking will be done like in the morning or in the night. When it's you have to be so careful with it, and it's expensive. So it's just for most Spanish winemakers, it's a waste of time and money. Um, but it's an old grape. So the first writing of this is thirteen seventy five. First it's very name, old. very old, and we don't know where it comes from. Blah 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 blah. But they think it is one of the original initial grapes that was domesticated from the wild Vitis vinifera, the original wild grape plant. This was one of the earliest ones. So even though I like to be like, oh, Pinot Noir is not as good as Monothrill or something, I have a lot of respect for it because it is one of the king of grapes. Um, it was it's been described as everything from like sex in a glass um, to sensual, sensuous. It's delicate and elegance. Those are the two calling cards of Pinot Noir because the skins are lighter everything is treated a bit sort of more delicately basically um one quick thing as well two interesting points you will probably have heard of pinot grigio and yeah. pinot gris and pinot blanc yeah. it's a pinot mini <laughs> it's a greater family of pinots um noir being the probably the f earliest clonal mutation which became yeah. its own thing and arguably the most stellar um Another fun fact which I found out when I did my research in my big wine book about wine grapes uh, is there's more plantings of Pinot Noir in the UK than there are in Portugal. Oh, really? So that's weird. It's become our most sort of uh, highly... You're no weird people. Yes. Uh, and if there's any Germans watching or in my German family, you may have heard of Spätburgunder. That's the same thing over there. So basically, it's this French grape which has... It's actually the tenth most planted grape in the world. You can get it in. He's a big fan outside. You can get it in Moldova. New Zealand are very good. Uh, Central Otago is probably my favourite Pinot Noir I've ever had. Tasmania have it. Um, Oregon is fantastic. Bits of California as yeah, well. You can find it worldwide. Yeah, it's just. I mean, like every grape, you can plant the grape everywhere, but will the wine be good at the end of it? You know. Well, here we have a good example. So yeah, I might, I might talk a bit more about the grape later, but we'll see. Alcohol content, just 13.5. And I say just 13.5 because we normally don't expect high levels of alcohol from this grape. But we do from this area, maybe. So this is like really elegant for that yep. area. Producers, uh, Hispano Suizas, wineries, and region Utiel Requena. Utiel Requena is, the, the, hell is that? <laughs> is the most western part of, of Valencia. It, I have, as always, I have my map this somewhere. Is so smooth. Somewhere here. 
I think, yeah, it's here. It's like the most inland part, right? Yes, towards, it's, towards it's in, yeah, exactly. And uh, well, the thing is that there you have a complete different weather than in the rest of the of the of the Comunidad Valenciana. Mm. Uh, here it is. So it connects uh, literally with Manchuela. Mm. It's between Manchuela and it's really squished in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite mountainy. I've, I've been I've seen pictures of it and it's quite mountainy. It's quite hilly. Yeah. But I think a lot of the I'm presuming a lot of the I'm, I am, I mean, I'm not, I don't know actually about these ones, but I imagine these are planted at a little bit of altitude because it gets hot there. Yeah. Um, in Uterrakena, for those of you who've tasted us before, you may know the great Bobal, which is like the superstar. And these guys have an amazing Bobal as well. Yeah, Bobos. 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 Who sounds like a, a character from Star Trek. Sounds like you. <laughs> really, really, really tasty and amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Shut up. Let's carry we on. will talk about uh, the region a little bit later. Let's go. Let's jump directly to analyze the wine. Okay. And let's go to the color. The color is probably one of the it's main characteristics uh, that probably we caught your attention. You can it's very pale. It's beautiful super pale. Color. Beautiful color. Yeah. It has a beautiful color. Uh, Look at that. Lovely. It's ruby. Like Ever says, ruby. Yeah, it's kind of like a, ru a yeah. Ruby is a lovely word actually for that. It's kind of a faded magenta or something. It's super pale. But very I mean, pale, can, and that's you know. It can be a very dark rosé. <laughs> yes. But it, what well, is, it's, it's super clear. It's super clean. Yes. And then the, our favorite bit. Tennis balls. <laughs> Earlier on, when you were just chatting away. I smell a tiny bit of cinnamon, canela. I got like a little bit of. By the way, this. Do we talk about this now? Well, we can say it now. Yeah. Well, yes. The the envejecimiento. Lo menciono ahora. Yeah. Yes. So th this is. Can got, we mention now? This yeah. is interesting because this has got ten months of new French oak. I think they're quite large barrels, so it's going to be delicate. Um, these guys do an interesting thing. They pick the grapes, all done by hand in little special cajas and stuff. Uh, and then what they do is they'll do four days of pre-fermentation maceration, mm. which helps get more colours and more. Which actually used to be quite a popular thing in Burgundy way back when. It's well, quite toasty, right? Exactly. And then it's going to these... So it spends four days in big 400-litre American barrels, not for flavour, just for colour and, and aroma from the fruit. It's really fruity. But then 10 months. And it gives you these lovely little, but really delicate toast. Yeah. Like someone's gone a piece of toast and they've gone uh, ooh, like that a lot of red fruit here cherry bomb cherries and strawberries absolutely but also it's like uh, this this fruits in liquor like cassis or something no yeah. not cassis like, like, um, like the cherries in liquor like that thing from yeah. the That's old smoky don't you get it yeah yeah it's very it has a beautiful perfume I think perfume it's quite floral yeah I don't, yeah ever floral yeah yeah absolutely yeah, so uh, quality, beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it's pristine. Would, would you say it's complex? No, you have to be careful with this word. Not five star complex. Complex five and one is not a, a quality thing. A joven, a young joven wine, that'll be one, for example, and a gran reserva will be five. It is complex, though, M more complex than I would expect, if that makes sense. But it's not very old. So I would say like three and a half or four. If you age this in your cellar, for I don't. This is like me experimenting for a few years. This will go amazing. You'll get all these funky notes, which often get with um, Pinot Noir, like mushrooms and umami and forest floor. That would be fun. But when you main age, you mean <clears throat> ten years, five years? If you leave this for like, because it's already twenty seventeen. So if you left this for Five to, Five six, to years. six years. I reckon it would be fascinating. Not that we would, is isn't straight down. Yeah. But if you get an old Burgundy, you can like lose yeah. yourself in the. The garden. longest I aged a bottle of wine uh, at home was four days, <laughs> and I noticed the difference. So it long, was, <laughs> so long. It was much better. Yeah, because you you <laughs> didn't know you had it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, so yeah, <clears throat> what else have we got here? Oh, the the taste. This is the best bit. Well, actually, 
we have a question. We got a question relating Ooh. to this idea. Whoa, we have a question. Finally. <laughs> Come on, guys. What's wrong with you people? Who? <clears throat> uh, Chris. Chris. Maybe Aguilera? <laughs> or Columbus? <laughs> <laughs> Chris <Or>, Topher <clears throat> Columbus or Chris C. Teagan she's a famous person I learned her name recently so <clears throat> Chris Spanish English American I don't know I hear people say Pinot Noir is light bodied in inverted commas yeah. <clears throat> what does that actually mean the idea of body in a wine well the body of the wine the body of the one, yeah. Well, one the of the head, main parts. There's the legs. Okay, the if you want to, uh, n a simple way to measure the body, uh, place the place the glass over a light surface, like can be the paper or anything light, uh, and move your fingers between the glass and this light surface, and look through the deepest part. If you can see your fingers through, that that means the the body is light, probably, yeah, or medium. If you cannot see your fingers because it's so dark, that would be a full body wine. Well, this this is a easy, easy method to measure the body of a wine. More technical. What is the body of the wine? Well, philosophers have been up. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's a, there's many things. Um, I think the main one, the most obvious one, I should say, is alcohol. So body is really the idea of the the. The, the, the mouth feel, how it feels in your mouth. Yeah. So you said earlier something really nice, which is the difference between, I think it was water and chocolate yes, in a yes, glass. Yes, yes, yes. That could be like an easy way to explain mm. it. Water would have no body at all, mm. and chocolate would have <clears throat> all the body of the world. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It'd be like Brega. Exactly. <laughs> so okay. it's, it's how it feels, and it maybe also interacts with your palate traditionally. So more alcohol, bigger body. Uh, more pigmentation. So yeah. Rocky said, if it's really dark, it probably has more anthocyanins, more pigments, maybe more body. Yeah. What, wh where this body comes from? Mainly from the maceration of yeah. the skins and the, on the, the musts. The musts, yeah. Yeah. So the longer is the process of maceration, mm. and you said this one had maceration. Four days, I think, to give it a bit more character, punch. maybe a bit more punch. Uh, but the longest you leave the, the skins to macerate with the wine, the m more color it will take. So the more body. But also the amount of alcohol. So yeah, that for me, for me that's the main one, I think. For me personally, like, you can feel it. Like, the, the wines, we, I mean, I, I don't know what you get wherever you are, <laughs> but in Spain we have some red wines, normal red wines, that are 16%. And you can feel it. It's creamy. Maybe it's garnacha. Normal garnacha, which is not a heavy grape, but that alcohol, oh, it coats it like syrup. Yeah. Um, also, you mentioned the maceration, the famous word tannins and things yeah. like that, that comes from the skin. So yeah, exactly. all this stuff is related. Uh, glycerin. Glycerin. Yes. So that is another, uh, another word linked to the wine tastings. Uh, but glycerin will give you uh, as well the sugar, right? Sugar content. But of course, as, as I'm sure many of you know, sugar just by itself. Barrel, barrel aging. Mm. The longer is the barrel aging, the bit more b body. The well, body will... I, I always find that one in difficult though, because if you have a very old, I, th I don't know. Well, there is a common mistake, and we have noticed in a lot of wine tastings when we talk about body, people tend to think the more body, the better is the wine. And that is incorrect. Mm. Every wine must have the body it deserves. Like me, people. <laughs> you have too much body. <laughs> no. Question from Harry. What is the longest... I, excuse sorry, me. No, carry on, sorry, 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 sorry. See, carry on, carry on, carry on. It is very hard to talk and to work with Luke Dark. Uh, so the, the 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 more body is not the better because you need balance. Mm. So if you have a lot of body but the wine is not balanced, it, it has edges. When you drink it, it has no structure. Then you have body for nothing. You mm. will have like a very astringent, probably dry. Oh. You have so a, like a tea. The body must be balanced, and for that you need a good analogist. You know, you have, you must have good grapes, good barrels. I mean, you need the you need a very well trained 
crew around you to make a good wine mm. with body. So uh, the body, the body is something that uh, is not it. It doesn't equals uh, quality or yeah, just like people. Yeah. Harry's got a question for us. Okay. What is the longest skins are ever left in a wine to macerate? Well, there's no precise answer. Uh, remember, you have what's called pre-maceration and post-maceration. You can have warm maceration, hot maceration, cold maceration. Ah, you can do anything. The general, this is going to be quite unuseful for you, Harry, but the general numbers can be from three to a hundred days. <laughs> Um, it's really the winemaker's choice. I would imagine it's all to do with the style of wine they want to make. So I think a good example is Garnacha, Grenache, Garnacha, which is kind of a medium body, great, medium skin thickness, medium this, medium that. If you want to create a darker, more punchy Garnacha, leave it for longer before you ferment it. Maybe even leave it there after, after you, excuse me, after you fermented it. Um, if you want to make a very elegant, for example, we have Madrid Garnachas from the Sierras, which I would say are even lighter than this. Because you can maybe, maybe you don't even bother um, doing a maceration. You just go straight into fermentation. So it really is part of the, how would you say, well, like you said, Roque, the winemaking aspect, which is the bit we don't often talk about as much. It's less glamorous, maybe. But you can really tinker away to make the exact sort of uh, style of wine you want. So three, three to 100 days. Good question. Well done, had it. <laughs> Anything well, else we have to mention on our list here? Uh, persistence, uh, finish. Let's have a look. Let's just test our finish. It's pretty long. Yeah. For a Pinot Noir in Spain, so you oh. could you can what about measure. What feel? It's, it's light. I was, trying, I was trying to talk about persistence. You can literally time it by seconds. How about the mouthfeel? <laughs> it's pretty light. It's very light. It's light. light Lovely to drink. Though. I mean, it's, it's the, well, we are going to it's jump good. directly to the pairing. Mm, yeah, yeah. Really good with food, wouldn't it? Um, I think it's one of the most versatile wines I've seen in the, the last weeks. You can pair it with on yeah, everything. It is pretty good. Maybe, maybe not the heaviest steaky yeah. meals, but even with the, in a barbecue, it would work. Mm -hmm. Even, even that probably. I mean, it's not the best option, but it would, you know, work. Um, and with lots of chicken and red fish and swordfish, you no know, meatier fish dishes. Almost. Anything. I mean, it's, it's a very super versatile wine. I just say I love it when I when I read these websites, and they talk about the food and wine pairings, and they say things like, "We'll go really great with salad." Who the hell's pairing wine with this? It's just like this is irrelevant. Don't say salad. Well, if you if you make a salad with <clears throat> and yeah, it's, it's, so what you're saying is cheese and dead stuff, but like inside a mixer. Oh, great with a, great with a mix that. <laughs> Temperature, uh, well, a little bit colder yeah. than a red. A little bit colder, but I mean, not not as a rosé or a or a white. 14, 15, 14, yeah. nice and cool. Fifteen, I would say, fifteen, sixteen, but a little bit colder mm. than a than a usual red. Price, here it comes. The bad news. Unless you bought it from <laughs> us with the box. But how much is this one? I think it's like 19, 19, 10, 19, 19 15. euros. It's not cheap. If you buy, if you bought it with our box, you say. Well, it's not cheap. No, it has a very fair price. Fair price for yeah. a high quality Pinot Noir. We have we, okay. We have had in the shop another Pinot Noir, which I won't say who, no. but it was a bit more expensive, and this is better. Yeah. So I think, like like I said, like none of the wines of Hispano Suizas are very expensive. But none of them are like if you know if you want a ten euro, eight euro Pinot Noir, this that it's not it won't be like this. We have seven euros Pinot Noir and here fine. in the in the and they are fine. But they're not this. But I would I would suggest you <laughs> to compare they, to compare young. both. They're young those yeah. ones as well. To compare both and you will notice differences. And then you can order cases of this. 
Um, the suggested glass it must not be the super big one. It can be the right. There is. A, have you ever seen a burgundy glass? Well, That's the stupidest honestly. thing. So, <laughs> I mean, it's really great. Tradition's amazing. Uh, I mean, let me draw a quick. This is really unscientific, but let me just draw a little quick. They're called burgundy glasses, and I think they're kind of silly. They go like this. Look, that's not a glass. Oh. oh. That's a burgundy glass, not as bad as that. <laughs> but the idea, I mean, it's all, you know me, I think it's all nonsense. I think any wine, put it in the biggest glass you've got so you can shove your face in it. But apparently that's not what the wine people say. But burgundy, the idea was it would collect here so you can, because it's very aromatic, like you said, you can really do that. But then it's like, oh, with the little bit at the edge, it goes straight to the back of your blab blab. Nonsense. Nonsense, I say. <laughs> You're super strict with the French. No, 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 not with the French. With silly things in wine world, like wine glasses. Pretentious nonsense. Yes, even though <laughs> I am pretty pretentious. Um, well, so, I sorry. Can we go back a little bit to mm. talk about uh, Utiel Requena? Should we show? We didn't show the video. Uh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> I was like, didn't we have a message from, from Rafael? Actually, we do have a message from, from Rafael, and we are super proud to have this here today. Hola, Luque. Hola, Roque. Soy Pablo Osorio de Bodegas Hispano Suizas, y os quiero presentar nuestro proyecto. Este proyecto innovador que nace en Requena. Dos socios hispano y un socio suizo. Por eso nos llamamos Bodegas Hispano Suizas. Somos una bodega pionera y sobre todo en apostar por una variedad, la variedad típica de la zona de la Borgoña francesa e incluso del champán, que es la Pinot Noir. Hispano Suizas hace una gran apuesta en la zona de Reguera por esta variedad, entre otras, porque también apostamos fuertemente por globales de viñas viejas, pero sobre todo con la Pinot Noir hemos querido innovar y hacer productos diferentes, porque tenemos algo muy claro, todo lo que se nos da bien en nuestro terroir es por lo que apostamos aquí en Bodegas Hispano Suizas. Queríamos hacer un concepto de cava con denominación de origen y sobre todo aprovechar que nosotros íbamos a basarnos en lo que es la tecnología y la forma de trabajo de champán. Para eso, una, un champán con denominación de origen cava es lo que queríamos elaborar. E hicimos chardonnay con pinot noir en plan de noas, luego hicimos pinot noir rosé y, como no, también empezamos la elaboración de los vinos tintos, en este caso vasos pinot noir con utiel requena como denominación de origen. Pero teníamos que seguir innovando y para poder innovar teníamos que hacer ese rosado con un estilo moderno que es el Improntum Rosé que también vais a catar y que os vamos a presentar en primicia. En Hispano Suizas tenemos muy clara la apuesta, calidad, calidad y calidad. No tenemos otra salida y sobre todo somos una bodega que ha nacido para quedarse en el mercado y ser hoy en día una de las referencias de las mejores bodegas de España y sobre todo el consumidor que sepa que se va a sentir gratamente recompensado cuando toma un vino de Hispano Suizas. Muchas gracias a todos vosotros y en breve estamos hablando del Impronto Rosé. Thank you very much. For those of you who didn't understand. We are so proud to, to have these, all these professionals in our tastings. Now, you may have noticed... Thank you very much. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, was he Swiss or Spanish? I think he is <laughs> the, the... Yes. So, yeah, there He's is... from the canton. From the canton du <laughs> Lucerne. No, so it is worth noticing that the name of this winery is Hispano Suizas. Yeah. Um, you've got Mar Green. Pablo Osorio, so it's probably, I guess, Italian Swiss, that guy. And then the most Spanish man in the world, Rafael Navarro. Um, so there's three of them, basically. It's the classic story, these three guys who love wine and their dream is to make high quality wines in an area which they fall in love with. In this case, as you said, Uterrequena. Um, so everything from the marketing, from the packaging, from the, the winemaking, everything is meticulous. But what is intriguing is they're bringing this high quality and really modernizing the region of Utiel Requena, which is, I think, worth a region where we should talk about a bit more detail, maybe. You know, think about it and drink about it, whatever. So, yeah, what do you want to say? Well, I would like to say something about Utiel Requena. Oh, okay. May I? May I introduce any idea? All right. In this tasting? Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> well, Utiel Requena is, uh, uh, as I said before, is one of the wine regions of the Valencia Comunidad uh, community. 
you can have also you know the Valencia wines and uh, Alicante wines. But the thing is that Hispano Suizas they use three. They make they make wine for three different DOs. What kind of extravagance is that? <laughs> this one is from Utiel Requena, but they also make wines for Valencia, like the Impronto, the wine which some will win. Ooh. Yes, the prize wine, and also they make Cava as the Tamtun Ergo that mm-hmm. we have uh, tasted and that we love actually. Uh, so yeah, Utiel Requena is the the. Uh, the wine region of this one. Mm. Okay. And I've been to Requena. Have you? I was in the town of Requena uh, with two friends a few years ago. There's a very nice little like museo de vino, like a shop, which is like a, a, cent, like a, a centro de X vino museo, like a mixture where you can learn and try various wines. It's very pretty. I think Utiel is, is the one which is a little bit more work a day, a bit rough around the edges. But Requena was quite a surprise. Yeah. Uh, and the and area it's, is beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, it's amazing. I have, I have a couple of pictures. There's uh, loads of hills, loads of mountains. Yeah. It's quite uh, a dramatic let me area. Check here. There you go. Well, this is not the most beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that idyllic, the idyllic mountains. But uh, I have, well. <laughs> you can hear Rocky quickly trying to, like, where the hell is the pretty one? <laughs> but, well, here is the, here is the yeah, winery. The, the winery is quite interesting. Yeah, it's beautiful as well. Uh, so that's the original building, uh, the more historic building. You see in the back there is the this is where they have the the bigger space, the bigger the the, the hangers where they have the the bottles and stuff, the bottles, the um oh the bottles, the barrel rooms. Um, but that's the original house. Oh, that's that's a nice one. Look at that. That's pretty. Yes. Yeah. That's that's the finca. Look at that. It's nice. Yeah. Well, the the region uh, uh, it gives beautiful wines. It's, it's the land. I mean, it's the kingdom of. Bobal, Bobal, uh, uh, Bobal, uh, a great that we have tried several times, right? Yeah, so we we have quite a few Bobals. We have them from Manchuela, from Mentrida, from Oterrequena. What is interesting about Bobal? I know this is the Pinot Noir podcast, but what is interesting about Bobal is it is the second most planted red grape in the country. People don't know about it. I've never heard its name yet. Utiarrakena is like the oh, spiritual home of this grape. So if you find a wine with Utiarrakena and it's red, very likely it's going to be a Bobal. So if you see them, and they're getting more uh, easy to find, and no offense to Pinot Noir, they're cheaper than the Pinot Noirs traditionally. Um, but that is the grape which flourishes traditionally more than most in this area. But there are other grapes you can use. Well, the, the, one of the, the characteristics of the weather in this region is that it has the, it's the confluence of continental weather mm. and Mediterranean weather. So we have cold winters, but in slightly milder, milder, milder summers. Mm. Right? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the grapes are not, the list of allowed grapes is not super long, uh, but Bobal, Tempranillo, Carnacha. Uh, Merlot, Syrah, Pinot Noir. Cap Sav. Cap uh, a lot of French ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I guess why? Je ne sais pas. Mm. <laughs> well, one of the uh, things I love to mention always in all the tastings is how the market is divided for... You China. love that. I love that. He bloody loves that. <laughs> okay. Utiel Requena. Okay. Oh, do you want me to answer? Yes. All oh, right. Uh, national market, international market. I have to just guess. Yes. Na- okay, let's say. I'm going to say. I'm going to go high. I'm going to say 80, 80% national, 20% international. 70% international. What? What? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. I didn't do very well there. <laughs> yes, it's a very international uh, uh, region. That's so nuts. it goes, the 70% of the production goes abroad. We just want to know where? <laughs> where is it going? And it's very, very productive. 22 mm. million, almost 23 million liters of wine every year. That's a hell of a party. <laughs> That's a few glasses of wine. Um, regarding the, regarding the, the, the whites, we have... Chardonnay, Macabeo, Merceguera. We have actually a beautiful Merceguera here mm-hmm. for, and it's 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 a best it's a bestseller. It's really yeah, people actively ask for it. 
Yeah. yeah. And of my beloved Moscatel, do you have it there as well? So and there is a weird grape, Tardana. which we have had one Tardana. It was an, a natural wine. It was a bit weird, but it was very nice. And yeah, that's the only one I've ever seen, ever had, probably will ever see again. <laughs> yeah, we are planning yeah. to do a series of very rare podcasts. <laughs> very rare grape. Welcome podcast. to the very rare podcast. <laughs> Graves uh, podcast, sorry, po podcast uh, dedicated to very rare grapes. So um, we have a lot here. Tardana could be one of them. We, are going, we, we start with a grape we have chosen called Castellana. Castellana Negra, Negra, which sounds almost yeah. racist. <laughs> yeah, right. Especially if it's coming from the Canary Islands. Yes, it's really weird. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is the, uh, well, the, the Rosés. Rosés are beautiful. They're, yeah, they're, they're pretty big. Um, the Rosé made mainly from Bobal, uh, and they're really good. Harry says, your redesigned Spanish wine map needs to include Roque's favorite wine production. <laughs> and international distribution stats. Yeah, we should do a little in brackets. 60-40. 30-45. Yeah, that could be great, but probably that makes the, the map... Very busy. A, a very, you know, with an expired date, super close. So super <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, know, I mean, Harry's really getting on. Mal says, what about inside the Arusa? If you do have any questions, we are following live in our chat. This wine so would match... Perfectly, my ensaladilla rusa. Everything goes with ensaladilla rusa. You, you had it, you had it a couple of days ago. My ensaladilla rusa. No, you didn't. You didn't get. It. You didn't bring that out. Yeah. No. You. You telling me you had Russian salad there? Oh, sorry, and you didn't bring it out. To, I forgot to take it out of the fridge. Well, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Goodbye. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. That's why I hate you. Crap. Try it. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I? No, I, I, what else we got to say? No, I... I what were you saying? I've been, I've been like, uh, side, side wiped. Wow, we've kept people hit. Well, this has been a long one. Who knew that a humble Pinot Noir from Valencia would give us <laughs> so much chat? Um, so, yeah. Chris. A quick mini, not a conclusion, but a mini conclusion about Pinot Noir. Traditionally, you won't find it in Spain unless you look for it or you get lucky. We're not talking about many wineries doing Pinot Noirs for the aforementioned reasons. It's a difficult grape. It likes cooler climates, temperate, but not wet. Um, it doesn't traditionally produce great wines in warmer climates anyway. Ergo, if you tried it, people might think eh, it's not good and you'll never get it off the ground. It's not a cheap grape. It's an expensive grape. So they're not that common yeah. to find. When you find one, if you can afford it, because maybe there are very expensive ones, I don't know. But if you find one, just buy it to try it. Um, if you're in Madrid or anywhere else apart from the USA, Netherlands and UK, and you want to buy a case of it, we have loads. Um, but if you ha are watching this now in the future and you've gone, oh, Pinot Noir Spain, this is the one you need to try, basically. Yeah. Well, remember, uh, please, to subscribe. Uh, 35% of our viewers are not subscribed. And you I goddamn like sons. Like goddamn son bitches. So please subscribe. Give us a like. Now, now, don't leave it for tomorrow. Do it now. If you're watching right now, don't, yeah, like. just do it right now. I will watch. <laughs> I'm watching. And press the bell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that just smelled really good. Sorry. It smelled like, it smells like. If you, if you press that little bell next to the subscribe button, that it means you will know you notifications when, yeah. when these two handsome chaps will be online. Who is the other one? Um, and also, please do stay tuned when we have time and energy. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're doing our best here, but when we have time, we are going to start uploading more content. Um, and also thematic things yeah. like I've got Sherry Week. In uh, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow we are recording an interview with uh, Rafa Gandia from Hispano Suizas. To we are going to taste that wine with him. But it's not, gonna be in not that bottle. Not that bottle. No. <laughs> we won't open your bottle. Uh, we are going to taste it, and we are We we are planning to do some Spanish tastings with the winemakers, with the owners of the wineries, with the people linked to the industry. Probably those will be in Spanish. So, Dad, if you're watching, time uh, to practice. But and they will be offline. I mean, not uh, not live, live events. Not live. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, we will upload it. Uh, and well, for Sunday, mm. Sunday nine thirty, so we are. The yes, please. Uh, it's here. Well, let me uh, walk back. <laughs> no, I, I need the exercise. Okay, on Sunday we are tasting this beautiful rosé from Humilla. It's literally the color of my face. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely true. You look like a Tempranillo rosé. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> so they only make this wine uh, once every two years. And we, it's like a, it's one like, how do you say those años bisiestos? Or the, like a leap year. Basically this wine didn't exist when we opened the shop. Yeah. And now it's a vintage. Um, so yeah, and it's still still warm in our country. So that would be uh, uh, next Sunday, the eighteenth at nine thirty sharp. Be there or be square. <laughs> and uh, what else? More information. Um, don't forget again. I feel like a, a teacher. Don't forget yeah, to do the Instagram order. and hashtag and at us if you want to win the big impromptu. The November box is almost set up. Almost. But, Yes. I mean, if you are watching this, I mean, we, we sold two boxes of the October one today. So if you still want to get it, you can tell your friends. But if you want, if you... The tastings if, will remain in this channel so you can watch them whenever you want. Yeah. Um, and there's always a... I mean, you can even drink it without watching us. I mean, I don't think... <laughs> I would do it. I, think, I wouldn't watch it. I think Fabio, for example, logs in and then just leaves it in the living room and he goes to have dinner with his wife and he goes... And probably so. dinner and sex. I think this is the kind of words that I know them I don't want to imagine YouTube, that yeah yeah YouTube hates but it's spelled it's, no we're talking about the, the German drink the German number six right? <laughs> exactly yeah um, well I really love this uh, Eva liked it as well apparently thank you guys I read each other way and I guess we'll see you on Sunday yeah see you on Sunday thank you very much <coughs> and oh mm. Daracat I love this wine. I like it.